Thank you for downloading this podcast. My name is Richard Rucroft. You're listening to Gnostic Lectures. This is episode 26. And the title of this is The End of a Cycle and a New Beginning. My host today, Mr. E. Jim G. Ross. How are you, Jim? Fine. Thank you, Rick. Thank you for inviting me again. I'm, I'm very pleased to be here. And thanks to also to our listeners for the honor of being here with you today. So the title again is The End of a Cycle and a New Beginning. I feel like this is a question, a question to the universe and a question to ourselves, including myself. You know, there are many, many scientific circles today and all kind of aggrupations of people who were denying, denying the global warming. You know, they were saying, oh, this is a, a leftist you know, approach into reality to take advantage. We are agreeing that in reality, the global warming is a reality. So when we say this is the end of a cycle and a new beginning, we are trying also to explain that. Is it that the evolution of planet Earth and the evolution of the planet of the humanity of on Earth, is it that we are not evolving any longer? because we touched the maximum of evolution, and now the time has come to descend within the wheel of time. So we have entered, or we are entering into involution, the evolution returning to the original point, the end of a cycle, because evolution and involution are different aspects of the wheel of life, the wheel of time. And of course, if there is an ascension, it will be a dissension sooner or later. So there are really cycles of evolution, cycles of involution. So when we speak about Gnosis, Gnosticism, there are three different angles to perceive reality. One is Gnostic cosmology, which is the study of the universe. Number two is Gnostic anthropology, the study of man, mankind, and number three, Gnostic psychology, which is the study of human behavior. The three, even they are different fields, within Gnosticism, within Gnosis, they become one amazing perception of reality interconnected within themselves, and also then being part of a bigger picture that most of the time we never perceive. But today we are going to try to explain it. You know, what's the end of a cycle really, according to Gnosis Gnosticism, and what's a new beginning? What's the real meaning of all of that? To comprehend this, you know, better, we have to accept, you know, there is a, no, a, there is a esoteric axioma, what's above is below, what's below is above, and what's inside it's outside, and what's outside is also inside. So it means that the entire universe is alive. Can we try to perceive that kind of reality? If we are alive within our planet Earth and compare with the universe, with the galaxy and many other galaxies, every galaxy contains millions of planets. So we are really so small, we are a tiny little piece of dust within the universe. But in reality, there are cosmic laws which are being applied to the universe and also simultaneously to us. So when we say that life is everywhere, life is everywhere, then we have to mention the absolute. And this is a problem because most of religions don't talk about the Absolute. After Albert Einstein described his discovery, scientific, proven, scientifically proven, the theory of relativity of time and space, that is not a theory any longer, he discovered the fourth dimension. But many people continue believing that everything is relative. When he never said that everything was relative. He also 
believe and he knew about the reality of the absolute. What is, what is the absolute? It's an spiritual universe that has never been created. It has always been. It will always be. But the absolute is the essence of life. It's the fountain of life. Life descended from the absolute through what we call the black holes. And the black holes are the bridge between the spiritual universe and parallel universes and also our physical universe that we can perceive, you know, through scientific research. Now, so if we try to understand that everything is alive, every planet is a gigantic living organism as part of, of a solar system, which is a bigger alive, you know, organism and also part of a, of a galaxy, a more gigantic kind of life. What if we try to comprehend that if we consider ourselves intelligent, there is a cosmic intelligence which expresses through the entire universe. It means that you know, most of the time people believe that intelligence is just a skill. Within Gnosis, within Gnosticism, we say that real intelligence has to be supported by consciousness, you know, which is a higher kind of perception of reality, because I can have a skill to kill, you know. I can be a professional criminal. And am I intelligent because of that? When I'm creating only enemies around, when I'm against justice, I'm against people, because I hate people, because I'm crazy. So can I say I'm really intelligent if I don't understand what I'm doing? If I'm, I'm working against law, human law in this case, but at the same time against cosmic law. So true intelligence should be connected with consciousness. There is cosmic consciousness and there is also individual consciousness. And there are degrees and degrees of consciousness. In, in a religious perception of the word, they call it soul. A soul is the same consciousness. According to Gnosis Gnosticism, where there is more light in the universe, there is more consciousness. It means in every star, you, we find more light. So it means that there is more consciousness within every star of the universe connected with every solar system, irradiating consciousness, cosmic intelligence. So it's very important to understand that the universe is alive and why are we experiencing the end of a cycle and a new beginning here on Earth? Is it that here on Earth, our level of consciousness is not good enough to be able to control better life on earth? Is it that our level of light, enlightenment within our humanity is in a very poor level, speaking in general? The answer is really, it has a lot to do with it. You see, according to Gnostic cosmology, every star, every sun is not, it is not, you see, a fireball. Our scientists, you know, they are still discussing what's within the sun, you know, that makes it so powerful, irradiating so much energy, so much power, you know, and they are afraid when they experience the vision of solar explosions. What is it? Is it the sun really a, a, fire, a fireball? The answer is no, no, not really. If the sun was, was you know, a fireball, it wouldn't be able to hold within the solar system and within the galaxy. It wouldn't be able to hold its presence within the galaxy and it wouldn't be able to hold physically the tremendous energy and weight of all planets connected with the solar system. So the sun is a planet like ours, gigantic planet, more than a million times bigger than the Earth, but it's a solid 
solid mass. Why do we see a fireball? Because, you know, we don't have the right instruments to perceive reality the way it is. What we see is the tremendous fire that exists within the sun, the tremendous amount of energy that we also carry within every planet of the galaxy, including our planet Earth. The liquid fire inside of us will make us look also as a, as a star. It depends on how you look at it from long distance. The problem is there is no enough fire within and there is no enough light within to be able to be perceived as a star, as another star. But you know, there is an exception here. Our planet Venus, Venus within the solar system, we see it every morning and we call it, we call it the morning star. Are we aware, are we aware that planet Venus is transforming into a star, into a sun? Why? Why is that? Why the Earth cannot, you know, become like another Venus, transforming into a star? The, the explanation is that there is life in the sun, there is life in every star, in every sun of the universe, the same way there is life everywhere. Except, except, you know, the moons. The moons are dead planets. It means the liquid fire of the interior of that planet moved out. It's like the spirit of the planet is not there anymore. Same thing that happens to us when we die physically. Our spirit, our fire will be gone. Our electricity, our solar energy will be gone. We can say the Holy Spirit, using religious terms, the Holy Spirit will be gone. Then we become a cadaver a dead body. Same thing with the moons. But every planet has the alternative to become a star also. And what's make, what makes that possibility to transform into a, a, a real reality? The humanity that lives within that planet that will transform into a sun, it depends on the humanity. It depends on their level of being it will depend of how much fire we can develop within ourselves, how much, you see, light we can emanate from within ourselves, because we have learned to increase, to multiply our own energies in an amazing way. Does it sound fantastic, incredible? Yes, it does. But let's try to understand the real purpose of life. We spoke before about the absolute, the uncreated universe, and the absolute created the universe, all galaxies, and to be able to create our real being, we could say the light of the light, cosmic wisdom, cosmic consciousness, cosmic love, descended from the Absolute, to create the universe. To be able to create, we needed two forces to be combined, a masculine force and a feminine force. The masculine force, we can call it the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and the feminine aspect of the being of all beings is matter. Matter. Matter is coming from Latin, that means mother, so is the wife of the Holy Spirit. So we could say the Holy Spirit made matter pregnant and the universe manifested. What's above is below, what's below is above. So there, here we are. The universe was created and all species were created with it. Life within, descending from life that emanates from the Absolute. This theory of the Big Bang, with all respect to those who continue believing in it, it is a laughing matter for Gnostic cosmology. Life can only descend from life. So now, then we can say that spirit and matter are the foundation of life in this part of the universe. 
because in the absolute, they are one, just one force. So when we descended here, we became two forces, spirit and matter. So now, what's the purpose of life then? Isn't it again to combine the two forces into one? Then we can return to the absolute, transform into good students of life. It means, how do we transform a spirit and matter into one again? We could manifest, we can describe the spirit as fire, electricity, solar energy, and matter is water. We are made of water, 80-90%. And also the universe is made of water. Or elements combined, you know, that will recreate water, like hydrogen and oxygen. So basically, this is extremely important to be comprehended. Now, all sacred books, and this is why, you know, science and religion that had, had been divorced from a long, long time could never give us the true perception of reality and the true perception of the purpose of life. So, you know, if we study, for example, the Bible, the Old Testament, connected with the Jewish religion and also the Christian religion and Catholics included, you know, the first book of the Bible, Genesis, it speaks about matter and spirit. The first, remember, the, the two trees in heaven, in paradise, the tree of knowledge, good and evil, isn't it the study of matter? And also, its purpose. What is the purpose of matter in the universe? This is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the second tree is the tree called of life, the tree of life, which is the study of the spirit. Because the spirit has always been, will always be. We will never die because it was never born. It is the tree of life, life itself, that descended from the absolute. But matter has a beginning and has an end. This is why planets die and they become moons, or they resurrect and they become stars, suns. Then they are able to procreate a family around them, which is a solar system. Same thing with us. The mystery of resurrection, or being able to incarnate the cosmic Christ, the cosmic consciousness. The Bible calls it the perfect son of creation. That's the cosmic Christ. Being able to experience resurrection. Does it sound incredible, fantastic? And many people will say nonsense. Yes, we understand, you know, any kind of criticism because it's something hard to be understood, especially if we're thinking about it. There are superior ways of perceiving reality, like emotional intelligence. We should learn to feel reality instead of thinking reality. So, Albert Einstein, one of the geniuses considered by, you know, Time magazine as the man of the millennium, he always said, you know, always said that inspiration, imagination, and intuition are superior senses that we all have. But we have to learn to use them without thinking. Because through thinking, we are going to move in circles and circles, going nowhere, and we will never reach a correct answer, a mathematical perception of reality the way it is. So, coming back into this, these two trees, which represent the study of matter and the study of the spirit, also manifest the purpose of life by learning to unite matter and spirit, to be able to come back to the absolute at the end of a cosmic day. It means when the planet Earth will die, we are all going to return to the absolute. So, are we going to come back the same way we left, or are we going to return growing, growing up, stronger, more spiritualized than before? So, then again, the purpose of life is to learn to spiritualize matter, and after when matter had been spiritualized up to a certain level, getting closer to the essence of the spirit, the spirit will be able to descend 
to produce that connection with an ascended matter. So we could say, you see, two ancient, very ancient spiritual sciences given to humanity we have by the angel Metraton are connected with the same knowledge. So the study of matter and its purpose within the universe and within ourselves also, within our own organisms, the purpose of matter is to transform from lead into gold. The lowest aspect of matter, we can connect, you know, atomic perception of a mineral called lead. And gold is a higher, higher mineral, it's a higher metal. And of course, transforming lead into gold is what we can call it alchemy. So alchemy is the, the real purpose of matter. That's the purpose of matter, to transform lead into gold. When we are able to ascend up to the level of gold, that's the moment when the spirit will be able to descend. The tree of life, life itself, the spirit, which is light, will be able to connect with an ascended matter, and then we can be able to produce the fusion. And this is possible within the universe and also within ourselves. So here we've got Gnostic cosmology, Gnostic anthropology, and Gnostic psychology, three different fields amalgamated into one. Because the universe is a gigantic living organism of a superior being, much higher than what we are. Same thing with the planet. The planets are the physical bodies of superior beings. When we perceive that reality that life descended from the Absolute, and at the end of the times, we are all going to return to the Absolute, transform into spiritual beings again. Now, are we going to come back the same way we left? Let's say we were baby spirits, a tiny little spark of light allocated within our heart. You see, why is said that we have that tiny little spark within our heart and we don't have a bigger, you know, manifestation of the spirit? Because it depends on the level of our being. If we're just baby spirits, do we know that the voltage of the spirit is so elevated, so high, so powerful, that if more and more aspects of the universal spirit of life could enter within ourselves, we would be electrocuted. What happens to people who are being touched by a lightning bolt? Most of them die because they couldn't tolerate the highest voltage. Or when you're exposed to electricity within your own home, you can have an accident and also you will be electrocuted. That's the same situation because electricity is a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. It's a manifestation of the solar energy. It's a manifestation of the Spirit within the universe and within ourselves. Now, the purpose of life is to transform that tiny little spark into a flame. If we can do that, we'll be able to ascend into a higher level and we will be able to amalgamate our own matter with our own spirit. And we have said it before, you know, now we are moving into Gnostic psychology, which is explaining again the difference between essence, between ego, and between personality. The essence is our real being, our spirit. Our real being that also created the spirit and created the essence of matter, masculine and feminine aspect of life. You know, the word God is coming from Latin Deus. Deus in Latin means two, number two. Dos in Spanish. And dos, two, Deus, God, means spirit and matter. So God is everywhere. God is the spirit and matter of the universe. The trouble in our planet Earth We've been confused for millennials 
you know, longer periods of time where people divided into two different currents of thought, the spiritual people and the materialistic people. And they develop wars among themselves. You know, Jesus Christ speaks about them, the Pharisees, which are the fa religious fanatic people who declare wars to other religions, and also the Sadducees, which are the materialistic people, the atheist people, who believe matter is their field. And with all respect, dear friends who are atheists, do you really understand matter? You believe you do, but you don't. You have, you know, approached the scientific field because you believe that by becoming atheist, you will be able to understand the universe. But any analysis that you develop will be incomplete because you are denying the reality of the spirit, the reality of fire, the reality of solar energy. You don't even, you don't even realize that the, the sun is alive, that there is a humanity that lives in, in the sun. People made of light who are breathing light. And in our planet Earth, we breathe oxygen because this is our level of being, speaking in general. We also have a few people here on Earth, superior beings, who are also people made of light, who breathe light. But that's a very small amount of superior beings that are sharing the same planet with us. Now, the situation is, you know, we are talking now about Gnostic psychology. To be able to produce that possibility of ascension within matter, transforming lead into gold. You see, we need to annihilate the inferior matter. What's the inferior matter? We call it ego. You know, we disagree with psychologists and psychiatrists who applaud the ego. They speak about an alter ego and an inferior ego, but in reality, ego is ego. Ego is animal psychology. And we could say it's the manifestation of hatred instead of love. Love is descending from the absolute because in the absolute, the spiritual universe, the uncreated universe, the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega of the universe, there is only one cosmic law, law and that cosmic law is love. Love is a law, but it's a conscious, it must be a conscious love. Now, hatred, where is hatred coming from? From the inferior matter. It is developed when we develop, you know, a wrong perception of reality, and we believe that becoming materialistic, we are okay. We don't need the divinity. We don't need the spirit. We don't need to accept that there is organization in the universe, that there is cosmic consciousness, and there is cosmic intelligence. We believe we don't need anything of that. So the tragedy is that we have developed the ego and the ego is a subconscious nature, inferior nature that we develop coming from fear. Because instinctively, instinctively, we develop, you know, that ego because we knew deep inside in our own essence that falls asleep because we develop that egotistic psychology, me, 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 me first, me second, me third, and I don't care about anybody else. And we develop the antithesis of love or hatred. And Jesus Christ was teaching about the seven deadly sins, which is the same ego. All religions were teaching about that. We explained that in a specific lecture titled Essence, Ego and Personality. The problem is many, you know, scientists, psychologists and psychiatrists confuse the ego with the personality. It is true the personality has been provided to us by Mother Nature, and we need the personality because it's the vehicle to communicate. But the ego is an intruder that we stole from nature, and because it didn't belong to us, it will produce only chaos within our own organism. And that chaotic wrong creation called ego is the inferior nature that has to be annihilated. Otherwise, 
we will return to the animal kingdom because we won't deserve to be part of, of you know, a society of humans. It's very simple. The problem is we become even worse than animals when the ego gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And this is why today our planet Earth is having troubles. Because our own wrong psychology, our own egotistic psychology, has brought us into darkness instead of light. There is no enlightenment around. It's only the opposite. Darkness and darkness and darkness. Ego plus ego plus ego. And we don't realize that when the ego has eaten, has swallowed our consciousness, we have become unconscious, infraconscious, you see, lower than consciousness. And of course, we have affected our emotional nature, our intellectual nature, and our physical nature. All illnesses are coming from the ego. And, and of course, we transmit that illness to planet Earth. And this is why our planet is very, very ill. It is ill of ourselves. Not because of our negative vibrations. The planet Earth is also connected with an emotional nature, or molecular, is connected with an, a mental nature, or atomic, and it's also physical or connected with the cellular universe. But on the other side, on the other side, you see, are we aware that we, ha we have contaminated the ocean? For many, many years, our industrial corporations have been throwing into the ocean all kinds of chemicals, chemical waste. And of course, the ocean contaminated means that we won't be able to swim there. And also, the species that live in the ocean will be contaminated and eventually they will decompose. So if we eat seafood, we are also going to become contaminated and even get sick and even die. Are we aware of that? That we, are, we have made of the ocean a garbage trash? Are we aware that we contaminated the air? There are cities on Earth where you cannot even breathe. A location where birds, thousands of birds, appear dead in the morning in many capitals of the world because of the contamination of the oxygen? Are we aware of that? That we have exhausted the soil of the earth because we have abused agricultural exploitation and also the mining exploitation. Because why? Why are, are we doing all of that? Because there is no enlightenment. There is only darkness. There is no consciousness. There is no a sense of duty with Mother Nature and a sense of duty with ourselves. Again, we only care about me, 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 me. The ego. We have forgotten that compared with the gigantic organism called Earth, that we made it ill, we made it sick. Imagine that we are a tiny little microorganism. You see, a, we could say a friendly bacteria to inject more life into our planet Earth, our gigantic living organism, our gigantic home, living home. And instead of being, becoming like that, we have done the opposite. We became a virus. Are we aware of that? Do we realize what we have done because of a wrong psychological behavior? Confusing the ego with personality, Believing that we need the ego to survive when in reality what we need is the spirit and also the personality to communicate better. But the spirit is connected with our soul, with our degree of consciousness. So we have ended ignoring our essence and we have fallen into the trap of divorcing from the universe and divorcing from our real being. Divorcing from the essence of life. So here we can see we have jumped from Gnostic cosmology into Gnostic psychology. What about Gnostic anthropology, the study of man? You know, the same Bible, in a past lecture we described the seven spirits before the throne. It means that 
The universe is organized according to number seven. Number seven is a cosmic law. It's a cosmic law based on the seven musical notes. So the universe has been created according to mathematics and according to music. So basically, when we speak about mathematics, allow me to come back to the second tree of Genesis, the tree of life. The angel Metraton, when he was teaching alchemy regarding the study of matter and its purpose, he was also teaching about the study of the spirit and its purpose also. So the spirit, to be able to descend, has to connect with the matter which is already ascended. Well, this science, this spiritual science, is called Kabbalah. How the spirit will descend only when the matter has ascended first. So then, coming back into mathematics, Kabbalah and mathematics are very much connected. And also music is also connected with mathematics. So then, again, now we are coming back into anthropology, but the relationship between anthropology and cosmology cannot be avoided because there is a strong connection. You know, in, in the, within the seven spirit before the throne, we spoke about the seven days of the week, remember? And we spoke about superior beings, the rule, the seven basic planets of the solar system, of our own solar system. If planet Earth is alive, every planet is also alive. You see, unless it became a moon. But even a moon, it could be a physical moon already dead. But within the physical moon, there is also an atomic moon and also a molecular moon. And in those levels, that moon is not dead yet. It will take some time before it decomposes completely and it becomes a group of asteroids traveling within the universe. A chaotic kind of mass and energy which, are, which is not organized and it has to be reorganized in a new cosmic day. Because this is what we are living today. This is a cosmic day. All moons used to be planets. And because their humanities became a failure, those planets died and those planets became a moon. But all suns and stars of the universe, of the galaxy, they are all successful humanities that were able to transform not only themselves into enlightened individuals, put people with more and more consciousness, more and more light, but also these people ascended into superior levels of being and they were able, capable of creating a planet which is what today we call sun stars. But also there are levels and levels of perfection within perfection. There are bigger stars than our star. It means that's a superior work done by those humanities that live there. Superior beings that live there. Does it sound fantastic, incredible, maybe ridiculous for someone? I do agree with you. It does, but we also have to learn to be open to any alternative. And if you are within the scientific field, you should never deny yourself any possibility. Otherwise, you see, you are making of your studies in science a dogma. You know, this is what happened with Mr. Darwin. Very few people are capable of criticizing Darwin. Louis Pasteur criticized him because he, people have made of Darwin's theory of evolution a dogma when he was incomplete in his perception of reality. We spoke already about Darwin in past lectures. We're not going to repeat what we said in the past. So let's come back now into our solar system. You see, we said again, we will say again that the sun is alive and there are superior beings that live in the sun. It's a planet like ours with mountains, with ocean, with rivers, with snow in some of those mountains. The only difference within the sun and the rest of the planets of the solar system, there are inferior dimensions within the sun, 
we can call them infernos, inferior dimensions of space and time. And those infernos are empty within the sun. That's the only difference. When our own infernos, by souls who pass away physically, and now they are being there, you know, they are being allocated there because of their ego. And this is what the Bible calls the second death. To experience the second death means the ego has to be annihilated by the liquid fire of the interior of the earth. So those souls will be able to be free of ego after a while. It could be a, a few thousands of years, a few hundreds, or even longer than that. So Mother Nature cares about, together with the Holy Spirit, about purifying our souls constantly when we fail to do it on the face of the earth. Now, coming back into cos Gnostic cosmology and Gnostic anthropology, the study of man and the study of the universe, we described before, you know, the seven planets connected with the seven days of the week. So, if we remember, we spoke about the ray of creation. The ray of creation, you know, it means the universe was created. So, from the absolute when there is only one cosmic law, until the infra-dimensions allocated in every planet of the universe, of the galaxy, there are 864 cosmic laws. Can you imagine how many cosmic laws? Why so many? Because all religions, and we have always said, that all religions are good because they teach the same principles. They have described the seven, I'm sorry, the nine heavens and the nine infernos. And all those nine heavens and nine infernos are ruled by cosmic laws. Within ourselves, we have a human cell and every human cell has also chromosomes within. How many chromosomes do we have? Scientists say we have 46 chromosomes, but we disagree with them. We say we have 48 chromosomes. And then scientists say we descended from monkeys, gorillas, you know, primates. Well, there is a connection with mon monkeys and gorillas. They really have 48 chromosomes, physically speaking. Why do we have only 46? Because spiritually, we are much more advanced than monkeys and gorillas. And those 46 chromosomes are physical, but there are two other chromosomes that are, have become etheric. And very soon, because we have discovered already the etheric universe, which is the fourth dimension, the electro electromagnetic field, very soon we'll be able to verify that two chromosomes belong to the etheric parallel dimension and 46 belong to the physical world. And why the connection with monkeys and gorillas? Because it's not the way Mr. Darwin described it and his followers. It's the other way around. People who enter into deep degeneration because of the ego and they transform into animals psychologically when those souls came back on earth, they came back with an inferior physical body, which is the body of a monkey of a gorilla. So monkeys and gorilla descended from us instead of we descended from them. It had never been proven, never been proven that a couple monkeys or gorillas had children that were humans, but it had been proven the other way around. Babies between a man and a woman, and we look like them, sometimes their babies were monkeys and gorillas because those souls had entered into a stage of deep degeneration and came back to earth in an inferior level, descending instead of ascending. Hard to comprehend? Well, we explained that before in another lecture. So there we can see the ray of creation, you know, something to be 
explain, you know, slowly, slowly, because to be able to understand the complete picture of life and death is not an easy task. It is a complex, complex task. And our duty from Gnostic anthropology, anthropological studies is to be able to understand and share with everyone who is willing to know better what are we doing here on earth. Why are we at the end of a cycle and why there is a new beginning? The second ray was the ray of medicine. How we annihilated illness. There are many, many illnesses and doctors say that there is no cure. Why not? You see, why not? When there is cure for every illness, are we aware of that? There is really cure. So there are two reasons why we haven't reached that level of consciousness, understanding of healing ourselves. One is that people are atheists and they haven't been able to connect the spirit with matter, to be able to ascend matter, annihilating the ego, and then we can reach consciousness. When the ego, the ego is unconsciousness. When we annihilate consciousness, we transform that energy into a conscious energy within ourselves. We create, recreate our own soul. And the soul would be able to connect with the spirit because it is closer. Our soul is composed of electronic particles. And the spirit is also fire in a higher level, electricity, but also connected with the light. So it will be then possible for the spirit to descend, to establish that connection, and to even experience resurrection. Is it possible for an entire human race to experience resurrection? The answer is yes. The habitants of the sun, they are all resurrected masters. They all experience resurrection. They all learn to connect matter and spirit to become one. And this is why they can tolerate the highest voltage of a planet that would kill us all if we get closer to it. So basically, this is one of the reasons. The poor level of consciousness and the poor understanding of medicine. You see, medicine has a purpose. And the purpose is also to be able to understand the spirit and matter. The founders, the founders of medicine in ancient Greece and also in ancient Europe, Galeno, Hippocrates, and Paracelsus, these three individuals, the three founders of Western medicine, they knew about this. They were all alchemists and Kabbalists. They knew how to connect matter with the spirit. And they were teaching that. Why is it that in our Western world, we ignore that completely? We could say that Chinese medicine sometimes is more advanced than our Western laboratories and, and the way we practice medicine. And the other problem is we have to say with all respect, even if it is a tough matter, the business of medicine, of course, was more important, profits or healing people. That's another heavy matter to be comprehended. When materialistic perception of reality have appropriated our way of life, of course, you know, profits are more important than healing people. The ray number three, the ray of arts, connected, you know, with planet Venus, connected with Uriel, and connected with Friday. You see, this is again, you know, connected with the seven days of the week. Uh, we said that Venus is a planet that is transforming slowly, slowly into a sun, into a star. It means that those individuals who live there, they, they, they've been able to move slowly, slowly into transforming into a sun. Venus has no satellite. There is no moon behind Venus. It means that, you know, in a past cosmic day, they were successful. 
they didn't need, you know, to recreate a new planet because the same planet had the power to continue being alive, very much alive. So coming back into the ray of creation, you know, the rulers of the moon and the earth are Gabriel and Melchizedek. Gabriel is an archangel, is a superior being, and Melchizedek is another archangel ruling the earth. And both are people made of light who can breathe light. So they are the ones who can help us if we have any conflict. For example, if we want to procreate a new life, we want to procreate to bring a baby into the world, they are the ones connected with it. So in a past lecture, we spoke about that. But in reality, what we have done, you know, we have ignored them completely. And sometimes we are bringing children into the world to die, to die of a starvation because we were not aware of the responsibility of becoming parents of new life. Now, the ray of medicine, we didn't mention the name of the Elohim ruling the planet Mercury, connected with Wednesday, the Archangel Raphael. Raphael is connected with medicine. So sometimes, you know, when we are in trouble to heal an unknown illness, there is nothing wrong with invoking Raphael, invoking Raphael in the name of the Christ three times. In the name of the Christ, by the power of the Christ, by the majesty of the Christ, Master Raphael, we are begging you for help to heal people, you know, who are in serious trouble and also to make a deal with these superior beings because they are there. They are more real than what we are. They are superior beings. They know everything. They can listen to us. Fantastic again? Yes, it does. And again, the ray of arts and love. You know, the planet Venus, Uriel, the Archangel Uriel, we mentioned that before, is becoming a sun, slowly, slowly. It will become a small sun, a sun that will have the possibility of growing, expanding in another cosmic day. Now, number four, the ray of justice. This is connected with the sun. So Michael is the archangel of the sun, the ruler of the sun, a superior being that also is breathing light and made of light. And Michael is connected with the ray of justice. Many, many scientists are very much concerned about the solar explosions. You say, and they say, oh, the sun is going to kill us. In reality, you know, the sun is helping us. It's giving us life. And there is a lot of evidence that in past times, when there was a revolution here on Earth, there were also solar explosions, like the French Revolution, the Russian Revolution, and many other revolutions on Earth were connected with solar explosion. And it is happening again. Many, many countries in the Middle East, where there were dictatorships, families that stayed in power for generations and generations, some kind of modern slavery, these multitudes are arising. Why? Because the sun is giving them the energies to wake up. It's just a tiny little step. It's a tiny little step, but God, the divinity, the universal spirit of life, and the essence of matter, the divine mother of the universe, they don't want slaves. We are not here to be slaves. We are here to stand up on our own feet and to dignify ourselves. This is why when people speak about free will and they say, I can do anything I want, do we really understand the meaning of free will? You see, there is a limit for wrongdoing. And now we have touched the limit here on Earth. Did, did you know that? Are we aware of that? This is why planet Earth is ill. And this is the end of a cycle, we say, or we are asking ourselves, is this the end of a cycle? Yes, it is. Because we have reached a level of the opposite of the opposite of free will. This is a slavery <laughs> where poor people are the slaves of people in, in position of power and 
powerful individuals are slaves of the ego. You see? Slaves of the seven deadly sins. Slaves of lust, anger, arrogance, envy, gluttony, laziness, and also the one that everybody applauds and nobody believes is a sin, greed. There are many people who are so convinced that greed is good, but we are telling you that it's not good. This is why when we have fallen into the trap of the ego, the ego, the animal psychology, that makes a descent. You know, so free will doesn't mean that. It's so easy to descend. You know, if I become an alcoholic and I'm using my free will, come on, am I getting more freedom by becoming an alcoholic or a drug addicted or a sex addict or addicted to money and addicted to telling lies to myself and to others? Come on, is that free will? Descending is not free will. Free will means we have to learn to ascend, going higher, to find freedom within the universe. That's free will. That's really free will. And this is why, you know, to be able to understand that those superior beings that we mentioned, Gabriel, Melchizedek, Raphael from planet Mercury and medicine, Uriel from Venus, the ray of love and the earth, and the ray of justice, Michael, they used to be like us in past cosmic days. But they ascended. They used their free will to find final liberation. And this is what they have reached already. We could say they are our elder brothers, our, you know, masters. They are helping us without being noticed. What about number five, the ray of strength, connected with planet Mars? In ancient times, they called the god Mars, because all these superior beings are the same ancient gods of ancient religions. The god Mars, in, in Judaism and Christianism, we call him Samael. Samael is the ruler of planet Mars. But we don't understand that wars, the god of war, is the war between light and darkness, darkness and light. So the purpose of life is to reach enlightenment, not to go lower and lower into more and more darkness. You see the point? So the ray of strength is connected with the fifth ray, connected with the Archangel Samael, planet Mars, and the day of the week is Tuesday. What about number six, the ray of politics and economics? Here we find the Archangel Zachariel, planet Jupiter, day of the week, Thursday. In ancient times, the ancient Romans, they called, you know, Zachariel, they called him the god Jupiter. This is why the planet Jupiter now is having the same name. But the ancient Greeks called him with a different name. They called him Zeus, Zeus. Now, what about, let's try to explain something very important. The connection between the ray of strength, Mars, war, you know, and the ray of politics and economics, Jupiter, Zeus, Jupiter or Zachariel. Do you know that to eradicate hunger on Earth, we would need 30 billion, 30 billion dollars or euros a year. 30 billion dollars to be spent in 365 days. Now, do you know that we spend 30 billion dollars or euros in eight days in military, you know, military equipment, weapons, and also keeping the military very much active, ready for war, because war has become a business? So what we spend in eight days would be the same kind of money that would, we, would be needed to support the hunger of billions of people on earth, billions, who are starving to death. The same kind of money. Can we speak about intelligence? Can we speak about consciousness? Can we speak about enlightenment? You see, and number seven, the ray, number seven is the ray of death. 
ruled by Orifiel, the Archangel Orifiel, connected with the planet Saturn. The ray of death is connected, of course, with death, physical death. But there are three kinds of death. We mentioned that before. You see, physical death is one. The second death that happens in, in Inferno, when Mother Nature and the Holy Spirit annihilate those demons that we created through our own ego, thousands of demons will be annihilated with the liquid fire of the interior of the earth. But that's going to be a very horrible experience because every pain that we cause to other people in many, many lives will be experienced again. So that way we will understand that what we cost to other people has to be paid. And we will pay with a horrible pain. And we will experience the second death, which is the death of the ego. The ego, this animal psychology, this evil manifestation of behavior, animal psychology, evil psychology, will be destroyed by Mother Nature. But now there is another kind of death, mystical death, that should be the most important kind of death. We should learn to annihilate the ego here on Earth, in our lifetime. Why to wait until we die, when it's much more painful downstairs than here? So when we do it here, that free will, because we'll be able to ascend, to find freedom, because we've been slaves of the ego for many, many lifetimes. So here we can see that we, we cannot say that we are proud of who we are. I have heard that opinion from many powerful business people who are very proud of what they have created. Many scientists believe the same thing. Oh, we have discovered so many things. We could improve life on Earth. But you know, neither science nor religion have been able to annihilate poverty and hunger on Earth, which is sad. Isn't it really sad? So here again, speaking about Gnostic cosmology, Gnostic anthropology, and Gnostic psychology, the three of them become connected, interrelated. So here we can see that why don't we ask those superior beings? They are helping us anyway. But if we spend some time every day to invoke them, to improve ourselves, not to take advantage of people. If I invoke, you know, Zachariel, Zeus, Jupiter, and I want to make, you know, I'm making already a hundred million a year, okay? But I would love to make a, a billion dollars a year. And I'm asking, you know, Zachariel, Jupiter, or Zeus to give me that chance and to produce that result. I have to create a war on many wars. Of course not. Don't do that. Because Zachariel is not going to help you. Zeus or Jupiter is not going to help you if you're trying to do that. Because this is not free will. This is descending into the lowest of the lowest to become a habitant of the infra dimensions of nature. And we are telling you, is this the end of a cycle and a new beginning? The answer is yes. Planet Earth is recycling. Otherwise the planet will die. It will become another moon earlier than its time. Probably it will become a moon anyway, but not yet maybe in a million years from today, if the planet is capable of recycling. Because how are we going to purify the ocean again? The ocean contaminated, the air contaminated, the soul of the earth, the agricultural situation, the mining situation, etc., etc. Well, we need to experience a recycling of planet earth. It means the geography will change. The ocean has to be boiled, you see, so then the steam will drop in another part of the planet, in a new container. New oceans will appear, but purified. New vegetation will emerge. New land, new continents, new life. Are we going to survive? It depends, it's up to us. 
You know, Mother Nature is recycling and is teaching us also to recycle ourselves, to improve ourselves, to practice real free will, to ascend instead of descending, because we are descending already. We are. Monkeys and gorilla are a manifestation of our ancestors who descended, people who collapsed, humanity that lived in Lemuria a million years ago, the Bible speaks about Sodom and Gomorrah. Today they are monkeys, gorillas. Their soul came back in an inferior level because they continue descending into the infra dimensions of space. What about the Atlanteans? Same situation. Monkeys and gorillas are also connected with Atlantis. Where is the free will of the souls? Descending is so easy. It's so easy. And now ascending is tough. But isn't that the purpose of life? We came from the light. Isn't it the purpose of life to return to the light what we more light than the level of light that we descended? So here we are. Is this the end of a cycle and a new beginning? The answer is yes. But it's up to you to decide whatever you want, you know, free will again. But let's learn to practice free will, to find final liberation, to ascend instead of descending, to be able to transform matter into light, to spiritualize matter, to annihilate the lowest inferior matter, which is the ego, that energy that we develop ourselves, that infra, infra-dimensional matter called ego has to be annihilated. And then our spirit, our real being, could be able to descend and to establish a connection. Then we can really amalgamate each other and we can return to the absolute, transform into superior beings also, higher than the way we left. Jim, what about aliens? What about UFOs? A lot of, you know, people are describing all over the world, you know, they are watching UFOs. They appear and disappear, you know, everywhere. And there are many organizations who are concentrated into it. And they cannot explain why some of those spaceships appear and disappear, you know. And in reality, today, there is a lot of information, you know. I don't have the name of the person, but I'm going to mention that a former Canadian minister who is not a politician any longer, he is retired, he described encounters of the third kind with UFO people visiting us, visiting the Earth. He described that they met with all the superpowers, with all the leaders of the Earth, because to tell us that we were having a lot of difficulties based on the end of a cycle and a new beginning. A planet recycling means that millions of people could disappear from the face of the earth, maybe billions. So, and they offered to help us. And there was some kind of a deal, you know, in the 60s or even the 50s. And this uh, former politician said that our superpowers broke the pact that we should have allowed them to continue helping us. But what happened is the military decided to stay away from them and to do things our own way. For example, you know, they've been fixing, you know, the atmosphere where we destroyed, we destroy, you know, this, uh, awesome. the ozone, the ozone layer. And people say, oh, it is, you know, they, they try to give an excuse about that. But the real cause of that is the nuclear testing. The nuclear explosion that have, were done, were done for a long, long period of time on Earth uh, from the superpowers are the main cause of the destruction of the ozone layer. Well, these superior beings coming in spaceships, they were capable of helping us to fix that in an incredible way, 
it continues affecting us because of our own irresponsibility here on earth. But in reality, you see, they did a lot. And also, they've been blocking the use of nuclear weapons because there was a moment that some of the superpowers were ready to use them. You know, what happened in Vietnam, what happened in Cuba, you know, there were many, many occasions where people were ready, superpowers were ready to use those nuclear weapons. And these superior beings coming from other planets told our superpower, don't do it. Because it will be a tremendous catastrophe, a double catastrophe. First, the radioactivity will eliminate the entire population on the Earth. And number two, the global catastrophe. You see, so now they are here, they are helping us, but many, many groups are saying that they are enemies, they are coming to invade us. Well, we can believe anything we want. But according to Gnostic cosmology, no one humanity is allowed to visit other humanities in different planets unless they have annihilated the psychology of war, unless they have annihilated their own ego. So those people are superior beings, not only technologically, scientifically, but also psychologically. They are real superior beings. We can call them angelical beings. So some people who have real experiences with them, they say they experience a lot of peace when they met them. Also, they are physically beautiful individuals. We are the ugly ones. Those people are really higher than we are, and they are here to help us. Whatever is going to happen, we can make a difference. Let's try to annihilate the psychology of war, the egotistic psychology, and let's try to learn to ascend, to be able to amalgamate our matter with our spirit and to become one and get closer to our real being, the divinity itself, and to become one with the universe and with its cosmic laws. You know, the universe is teaching us, is teaching us to organize ourselves according to our own capabilities, our own vocation in life, you know. Everybody has talents. For example, if I feel that I were born to be a doctor because I would love to be able to heal people, well, why not, you know? Mother Nature will give me that possibility and, and then I have to discover which ray is my ray. You know, I didn't know my ray for many years. I thought it was politics and economics. And even I was thinking in medicine, you know, why not, you know? I had a girlfriend in the past. We never really... Uh, continue with our relationship well, she became a doctor and she invited me to also join her and working together but I felt it wasn't my ray until I discovered it later which is the ray of justice so whatever I'm doing right now is doing justice to myself paying my karma paying and trying to annihilate my inferior nature and also helping others to do justice to themselves because we are here to ascend why do we have to descend you know and never stop descending and descending so this is why it's very important to to explore to know ourselves better and better and to discover our vocation because we all have talents everybody has talents nobody is better than anybody because Everybody, as we said, everybody has a, an incredible hidden talent. If you discover your talent, you will be able to become better than a scientist, than a doctor, than a politician, you know, than a famous individual, because your talent was given to you by the divinity, by Mother Nature, and of course, is there to be applied, to be used, and to be developed. Well, Jim, thank you very much. You have been listening to Gnostic Lectures. This has been uh, lecture number 26, uh, the end of a cycle and a new beginning. Thank you very much, Rick. Thank you for inviting me. And thank you to our listeners, to our audiences, whatever you are. Thank you again. And of course, the website is rickyradio.com. My name's Richard Rucroft. Don't forget the email address is gnosticradio at gmail.com. Thank you.